It's well known that Steven Erickson explores a lot of themes of the human condition and experience within his series Malazan Book of the Fallen. Today I'm going to be talking about one character in particular that I feel exposes a lot of hard truths about trauma and the way that society perceives trauma victims. <laughs> Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. It's Tori. This is a topic that I'm incredibly passionate about and one that I knew at some point on my channel I definitely wanted to do a deep dive into because of the fact that this character had such an incredible impact on me. The story had such an incredible impact on me when I first read it. I'll get into that a little bit more in a bit here, but first I'm going to give you an overview of what this video is going to be about. For the overview of this video, the first thing I'm going to be talking about is my personal reading experience of this character and Malazan as a whole when it comes to the four books that I have completed reading in the series itself. After that I'm going to be talking about how this character exposes a lot of the perspective that society has on trauma and trauma victims. Lastly I'm going to be pointing out some key elements within this character's story arc that I found were especially impactful and kind of tie together everything I'm trying to present in this video. I will be going into this character arc in depth, so if you have not yet read um, up to House of Chains of Malaz and Book of the Fallen, please be aware that there will be heavy, heavy spoilers in this video. Another big content warning that I am going to give at this point is that I will be talking about trauma and trauma victims in this video, so please be aware of that and only watch if you are comfortable with that. The last thing that I will use as a disclaimer in this video is that I am not a mental health professional or a medical professional. This video is a product of my personal experience and research and should be taken as such. So as I said in the title of the video, the character that I will be talking about is Felicin from Malazan Book of the Fallen, and I'm going to be specifically focusing on her story arc between Dead House Gates and uh, House of Chains, although I will make probably a brief mention of the little bit of her story that is in Gardens of the Moon. The first thing I'm going to share with you guys is that I read Malaz and Book of the Fallen books one through I think three back when I was in college and that was over 10 years ago. And this is a series that has stuck with me very vividly over the 10 years because of the impact that it had. When I first came into Malazan, I was very new to epic fantasy in general as a reader. I had only read uh, Mistborn by Brandon Sanderson, and I'd read, I think, The Hammer of God tri trilogy by Karen Miller. And then I got to Gardens of the Moon, and I picked it up on the recommendation of a friend of mine who was into epic fantasy. When I picked up Gardens of the Moon, I was a little confused about what was going on in the book, but by the time I got to Dead House Gates, the series had gripped me in a way that no other book series had ever done before, and I started to realize the depth of human experience that was being explored in the books. I related very, very heavily to Felicin in the books, and I was blown away by what Erickson was able to do with her character and the things that he was saying with her character, and just the way that her character spoke to so many things that I was feeling that I didn't yet know how to express. My senior English presentation for my Bachelor of Arts degree in college was actually on emotive characters in fantasy. I wrote a paper on it, and in that paper I cited a lot of paragraphs from Steven Erickson's blog, I cited this section of Dead House Gates that I had read, and I actually talked quite heavily about how Erickson uses emotive characters in his work. Now we're going to jump the timeline ahead a little under 10 years to a point in 2019. As I started learning more about trauma and learning more about myself and my past, I started to recognize again how impactful the character of Felicin had been for me 10 years ago and why. Despite not going to therapy until my late 20s, I had already been noticing and feeling the effects of societal norms and perspectives on trauma and trauma victims pretty much my entire life. It was just that now I finally had the ability to articulate what I had experienced. Once I got into the fantasy community and got onto booktube and started exploring everything that everyone was saying about my favorite books, I discovered something really surprising within the community around Malaz and Book of the Fallen, and that was that Felicin was an incredibly controversial character. And this kind of blew my mind because, you know, locked in my own little sphere, all I knew was the experience that I had had with Felicin and how she had impacted me and what I thought of her, and it kind of blew my mind to start reading about how other people felt about her character and that they really didn't like her and some of the reasons why. 
Now, before I get into all of this, one of the things that I definitely want to point out is that there's a difference between understanding someone's behavior and condoning someone's behavior. Between my own experience, experiences that I have witnessed that others have been through, and the response that I was seeing to Felison as a character really kind of solidified a lot of the pieces that I was starting to put together about society's romanticization of trauma victims. So what I have noticed within this romanticization of trauma victims is that a lot of people seem to want to go from the trauma to the TED Talk. And here's what I mean by that. A lot of people don't seem to have any issue asking about what trauma you've been through specifically, and then they want to know how you overcame it. And I'm not gonna lie, I love a good overcomer story as much as the next person. But one thing that I will say is that it makes it very difficult when you are in the middle of the gnarly struggle that is trauma and trauma healing to look up and see everybody lauding these people who have come so far and they've done these amazing things and they don't seem to let their trauma affect them anymore. And that feels like a horrifically unattainable goal. There's a great meme that I saw recently that I feel really illustrates this point, and that is that people seem to celebrate the climb up to the top of the mountain, but they don't celebrate when people pull themselves up out of a pit. I'm not gonna go too much farther into this because I feel like I've kind of made my point with what I've said, but here are some very important notes that I wanna make before I go into Felicin's story specifically. Number one, trauma healing is a struggle. It is dark, it is gritty, and it is hard work. And I think a lot of people don't recognize how much of a winding road trauma healing actually is and how many backward steps that you take during trauma healing. It's not linear. And that is one of the things that I have noticed in the romanticization of trauma is that a lot of people expect that it will be. One of the questions that I got quite a few times when I started trauma therapy was, well, how long do you think that'll take? because people were already jumping from the horrific things I'd experienced all the way towards the end result, which was me somehow magically evaporating my trauma through therapy. The second thing that I want to point out that I think is going to be really important for Felison's story is anger is a secondary emotion, and it always hides a variety of other emotions underneath it. The third thing is about Steven Erickson as an author, and that is that we know that Steven Erickson does not shy away from really hard topics. He does not pull punches in his books. That being said, I have read quite a few books that put in really hard topics for the shock value, and that is something that Steven Erickson, I don't feel, ever does. The reason that he includes these hard topics is to explore them and to really expose the truth about how humans react to different experiences and what that can do to them. All right, now let's get to Felicin. And I will say, if I ever slip up and say Felizin, that is how I have always pronounced her name and only recently discovered that it is apparently pronounced Felicin. I'll do my best. We're gonna start with a very brief mention of who Felicin was in Gardens of the Moon. She's the daughter of a noble house, she has an older sister and an older brother, and she has a fairly pampered life. This is really important because one of the things that a lot of trauma victims go through is some kind of intense identity crisis, and that is something that we see when we move from Gardens of the Moon to Dead House Gates with Felicin. Along with that theme, we see that in Dead House Gates, after she's been captured, she's been thrown into a completely different world than anything she's ever known, Felicin has to become someone else in order to survive the situation that she is in. Survival mentality when you're in the middle of trauma in so many ways removes your ability to function in the way that a normal person outside of trauma would behave. Throughout the story, we see her take on this I'm going to hurt you before you can hurt me mentality, and that is such a heavy indication of a protective mechanism. She is literally trying to project onto everyone else I can hurt you, so don't try to hurt me, because that is one of the only ways that she can keep herself from being harmed further. Another thing that you'll see her adapt is the idea that I can handle this, it's not a big deal, because she's trying to convince herself of that as much as everyone else. Along with that, she resists and even refuses, oftentimes, protection from outside sources, because she does not believe that these people can or want to protect her. One of the things that's gonna be a very important theme to keep in mind from Gardens of the Moon all the way through House of Chains is the fact that Felicin is at heart 
a protector. You see this come through in a big way, where she is in a situation in Dead House Gates where she is enduring some of the worst abuse that she possibly can. And part of the reason why she is doing that is to protect Bodin and Haborik. This theme of protection is going to come back later on in her story arc, so keep that in mind. Throughout her story in Dead House Gates, even when she escapes with Bodin and Haborik, we see her lashing out constantly. We see this exhibition of anger that is, again, a protective mechanism trying to push away the people close to her because in her mind she is going to be hurt if she doesn't do that. Even when she escapes with Bodin and Haborik, we see Felicen still pushing and lashing out at the people around her because she's afraid, because she's still hurting, because she doesn't know how to articulate or confront any of the things that she has been through. Now I'm going to read the excerpt from the part of Dead House Gates that was the moment that impacted me more than anything else I've ever read in fantasy. The figure that emerged from the ochre mist sank talons into her sanity. She heard a whimper from her own throat. Bodden was burned, gnawed, parts of him completely eaten away, yet Felicen knew it was him. He staggered another step closer, then slowly sank down to the ground. What is it? Hiboric demanded in a hiss. This time I am truly blind. Who has come? No one, Felicen said after a long moment. She walked slowly to the thing that had once been Bodden. She sank down into the warm sand and reached out and lifted his head, cradled it on her thighs. He was aware of her reaching up an encrusted, fused hand to hover a moment near her elbow before falling back. He spoke, each word like rope on rock. I thought the fire immune. You were wrong, she whispered, an image of armor within her suddenly cracking, fissures spreading, and beneath it, behind it, something was building. He drew a ragged breath. You... Felicen waited, hoping the life would flee this husk, flee it now, before you were not what I expected. Armor can hide anything until the moment it falls away. Even a child. Especially a child. I don't honestly have words for how profound it is that Erickson uses this imagery to show how we desperately protect that wounded child inside us. The fissures in that armor that Felicen has built are starting to crack, and that is such a profound moment for so many people who have dealt with trauma. When we start to crack apart that armor and see what's underneath it, it is a breaking, and I think that Erickson was incredibly profound to point to that in the way that he explains this moment. This is the part where society says, this is where the TED Talk happens. This is where Felicen confronts her demons and she gets up on that stage and she gives her testimonial in front of the masses. Because yes, in this moment, Felicen changes. She becomes someone new, again, because she's adapting to survive. But as far as the uphill climb to that testimonial stage, trauma doesn't always work that way. Now we're going to jump ahead to House of Chains, and this is a place where Felicen's story arc really comes full circle. This is a place where, once again, Felicen has to become someone else to survive, and we see this in the fusion that happens between Felicen and the whirlwind goddess who kind of takes over her body in order to achieve her own goals. This time, however, Felicen does accept the protection of others, and we see that in her relationship with Karsa. And the fact that of all of the characters that she could possibly be with, it's Karsa. The part of House of Chains that I really want to draw your attention to to kind of finalize this full circle arc that I'm talking about is at the very end. Felicen goes out to meet Tavor to do the duel, and Felicen knows the whirlwind goddess has left her. Felicen has no chance to win this duel. However, she's completely hidden in what? Armor. No one can see who she is, including Tavor, who is her sister and would have recognized her right away. The duel happens and Tavor wins. Felicen dies covered in armor. No one can see what's hidden underneath. In this armor, she's hiding the child that she was and will never be again, and she's coming face to face with her sister, who in a, in a way represents everything that Felicen has lost. Her innocence, her family, her sense of who she is as a person. She's come so far from the pampered daughter that we found in Gardens of the Moon that Felicen doesn't even recognize herself anymore. 
she knows there's a part of her that is still that girl from Gardens of the Moon, and that is the part I think that she has hidden away in this armor. I was talking with my friend Joanna, and Joanna said she's asked Steven Erickson this question several times, and that is, did Felicin know that Tavor didn't know that it was her in the armor? And Erickson apparently has never answered this question. I don't know that he ever will. My answer to that as a reader is that, yes, Felicin absolutely knew that Tavor didn't know who she was, and I think she wanted it that way. She'd gotten to a point where she was so done with everything life had thrown at her. She had nothing left to give. She wanted to be done. And she would probably rather have died by the hand of someone who loved her at one point than a total stranger. That being said, remember that we kind of exposed that Felicin is at heart a protector, which means that she wouldn't want that horrible burden resting on Tavor for the rest of her life. I can't say this for sure because it's not my perspective, but I think that a lot of the people who have major issues with Felicin as a character really struggle with how much she lashes out and how quote-unquote obnoxious she seems in a lot of the story. I I actually think that it makes a lot of sense for Felicin as a character, and in all honesty, despite the fact that I don't agree with necessarily the fact that she's lashing out at everybody around her, that it makes sense, and that Felicin is articulating her trauma in the only way she knows how. Her story has always been incredibly heartbreaking to me, but it is also one that has given me a profound amount of strength, and for that I have to give a lot of credit to Steven Erickson for creating a character and understanding who she was and what she had been through to such an extent that she had that kind of impact on me. When I look back on myself in college and how desperate I was to be able to articulate what I was feeling and having no words and no idea how the puzzle pieces fit together. I could completely relate to the space that Felicin was in, and I understood her in a way I think that maybe some readers don't. If you've made it this far in the video, I want to say thank you very much for listening to my story and my thoughts on Felicin's story, and I would love to know your thoughts down in the comments on anything that I've said here. Feel free to share your own experience with Felicin, regardless of what it might be because I know that a lot of people really struggle to understand her as a character, and that's okay. I'm not here to say that anyone with a different experience with Felicin's character is wrong. I think we can learn so much about ourselves and the world around us from having discussions about characters like this. Again, I would really love to hear your thoughts in the comments. Thank you so much for listening to this video. Um, I know it's a little bit of a different flavor than most of the things I post here, but this was something that was really important to me, so thank you very much again for watching. I hope you guys are having a great week, and I will see you in the next video.